The following is a sponsored program paid for by Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. Andy Brownell with News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. And Robin's back. Robin Gwaltney. I'm back. Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. We had fun talking to Travis Brevik last week. Got to know another local Rochester guy who's in the real estate business, but... uh, you you must have had fun. You were down in Arizona where it was nice and warm. It was nice and warm. It was tough to come back. <laughs> I, I had fun listening to Travis's show. I thought he did a great job. I didn't listen to it live, but I listened to the recording later, and I was really proud of him. It makes me so excited to know I can be out of town, and I've got this team not only to cover for me on the radio, but to cover you know my business if I'm out of town. I mean, it didn't slow us down a bit being there. We were working away. And uh, down in Arizona... You were, you were at ball games, weren't you? We were. So they have this thing called the Men's Senior Baseball League. So not the MBL, but the MSBL. And then they call it the MSBL World Series. And so they have like a six-week tournament. This guy out of uh, Vegas started it like 30 years ago. And it started small and it grew big. But they have different divisions, like 18 and over, 28 and over, you know, 45 and over, 55 and over. They even have a 70 and over. It's a lot of um, retired um, professional baseball players. Oh, yeah? yeah, major leaguers. And it's fun to watch them. It's really fun to watch them. They just love the game, and they're out there playing. Like, everybody out there playing is 70 and over. It's it's really fun. And we're not talking softball. We're talking baseball. But when our son turned – Scott started playing in this thing 27 years ago. But when our son turned 16, then we qualified for the father-son division. So we moved into that division. And we've been playing with the same team for 14 years. Wow. Yeah, we have a really good team. But, you know, we kind of made a lot of jokes this year because our dads are not as young as they (laughs) once were. So when we're coming up against the teams that have the 45-year-old dads and the 20-year-old sons, and we're the team with the 35-year-old sons and the 60-year-old dads, it's, you know, a little disadvantage. Yeah, but you were there at one time. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And we just won it a couple years ago. So, I mean, we did well. We made it to the... The playoffs, and then if we would have won, we would have been in the championship game, but we lost that one. So, so are these folks you see throughout the year, or is it just once a year? They're up you in go? the teams out of the cities. Okay, so we see them and you know stay in touch, but not not on a you know regular yeah. basis. It's just, not like they're playing yeah. summer ball with these guys. Well, they do play, and they invite us up, but. Brett plays on the Serpents, of course, and this year ugh, Scott didn't play any ball, and it might have shown just he was a, a little rusty. Just huh? a little. He got three <laughs> hits instead of you know fifteen like he normally would. So yeah, he was a little rusty, <laughs> but he still played and he did great. Wow, that's a nice trip. It was fun, not only to the warm area but also baseball. Yeah, fun. and of course, um, you know, our daughter. It's been a family trip for us ever since the kids were one and three. So I look forward to it. Of all the trips I take, you know, I take a lot of fun trips. I take a lot of work trips, but this is always my favorite trip of the year. Yeah, you guys are serious baseball family. We I mean, are I knew a, baseball a baseball family. family. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, we love baseball. All right. So did you? Completely void of work while you're down there? No, no. Actually, five of our listings sold while I was down there. And um, that was amazing. So, you know, for the boots on the ground part, I had plenty of team members here, but so much of it, you know, negotiations and stuff can be done over the phone and contracts can be signed electronically. So it's it's crazy. So this is kind of, I would have thought myself just as an observer, a little slower time of the year because of the shift in weather and the approaching holidays, but it sounds like you're still going gangbusters then. Going gangbusters. I came home Monday late afternoon, so this week I've already been to five listing appointments, and I've gotten two more listings sold since I've been home. So, yeah, it's busy. It's good busy. Things are still moving in the real estate market. Well, yeah, and I heard on the news yesterday that um, – the feds are going to drop the interest rate yet again. Another quarter point or yeah. half point. So, I mean, people, you have to take advantage of these low interest <laughs> rates. It's just amazing how much more house you can buy. As a matter of fact, I was at a listing appointment on Halloween evening, and the the family, the couple, is getting ready to sell the house that they've lived in for the last 30 years and maybe move to a townhome. And they said, how do these young people afford 
these houses. And I said, well, the thing is, you have to think about it. You can buy a lot more house when you're paying three, per, you know, three percent, three and a quarter, three and a half, even four percent versus six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight, which, nine and a half. But yeah, but like when I got my first six percent mortgage, that wasn't my first mortgage, but when I got to refinance at six percent, I thought, oh my god, there's no way I'll ever <laughs> see lower interest than this. So yeah, it it helps. It gives it does give buyers buying power. I had that conversation, in fact, earlier this week with somebody, and they were along the same lines that uh, in to find a home now that's under two hundred thousand dollars in this community, it's pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of competition for mm -hmm. that price range, and this person was remarking almost the exact same thing that you said. Well, holy cow, that's two hundred grand. I can't imagine that when I was that age, being able to even think about a two hundred thousand dollar right. home. And I said, well, you and I were starting out. 10% interest when we were getting and our income <laughs> And our income was less as That's well. That's true, too. Right? I mean, the, the starting pay at jobs out of college or, you know, even minimum wage jobs, everything, the pay is increased, which is, you know, part of it, I guess. In this community, you have so many young folks who have that professional degree as well, and they are... They're they're doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, Rochester is um, you know definitely one of the highest per capita incomes in the state of Minnesota. Yeah, there's a lot of highly educated, good you know good jobs. That kind of is a different dynamic for a marketplace, I suppose. When you have that young couple or even the single who has that high income mm -hmm. coming right out there, twenty five years old, twenty six years old. And instead of looking at a starter home, they're looking at what most of us would like. A lot of us would say it would be the home that we dreamed to have someday. Yeah, I think I've told you this before, but um, our son and daughter built a house together. And people thought, wow, that is the craziest thing. You know, your son and daughter are going to build a house together. And our daughter at the time was engaged, so they knew it was going to be daughter, her husband, and son. Okay. But they're all really close friends, right? And they were looking at what their money could buy, and they were looking at if they did it separately, then they could each do, you know, two fifty, three hundred, and that's the price range that it's multiple offers. It's ten people trying to get the house. Oh, sure. You know, it's it's not where you're getting the biggest bang for your buck necessarily. And they're really hard to come by, right? So they were like, what if we just built a house? I said, well, in that price range, it's tough to build a new house. You know, they were both thinking about doing it separately. Oh, okay. So then they started to talk about, um, you know, our son came up with the, why don't I build it? You rent from me. And then my daughter was quick to say, no, how about I build it? <laughs> you rent from me kind of thing. So anyway, at the end of the day, um, they started to, look at houses in a higher price range, thinking let's go together and buy a house. Well, then you go and there's one clearly nice master suite that's meant, you know, for the primary, you know, the, the sure. one who pays the bills, right? And then um, they said, well, that's not really fair if we're doing it together. So they built. And they built a house that has two master suites and um, two really nice living rooms so that if one's watching something and the other one's watching something or if one's entertaining or whatever. And they've got a huge kitchen where, of course, they share. And then they've got a really nice bar downstairs. They even have a full gym under their garage. And because they did it together and the interest rate was so fantastic, I think they each pay like 1100 bucks each like my daughter and her husband as a couple, and then I got our son. Okay. But it's like, what could they rent at that <laughs> price point? Nothing. So I was the mom saying, you know what? As long as you guys are going to do this, spend your max that you're approved at. And I had friends saying, why would you tell your kids to do that? I'm like, because I look at that house as their shelter and their savings account. You know, they're making that payment each month, and they're building equity. Equity in the home and they're still living very reasonably and they like living together which is what <laughs> well you know as you remember we raised them at the rochester better chance house so they're oh. pretty used to communal living that's great right? yeah i was i, I, I couldn't imagine my son and daughter trying to pull that one. No, 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 no. <laughs> no they really do, they do well well we're with robin gwaltney gwaltney group remax results on this saturday morning we're going to we're going to talk more about Rochester real estate when we get back on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM.
We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. Welcome back. Andy Brownell with News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. And, of course, Robin Gwaltney is still here. Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Um, you mentioned you picked up some new listings while you were out of state. What kind of listings are you, are you seeing this time of the year? Well, we got a, a lot of variety, actually. Uh, a couple of them have already hit the market. Um, one is in um, historic Southwest, and it's a big two-story that came on the market for, I think, just under 400000 and it's over on 10 and a half Street, Southwest. And then we have, that one's already up and running, and then we got one up and running over on Villa Road, um, just on Friday as well, and that one is two fifty nine nine. Super nice. Uh, the gal bought it, and she has put so much into it. She put all new windows, new siding, a maintenance free deck that runs the whole back Ooh. of the house. It's got three bedrooms and three baths, and um, some really nice. She upgraded a lot of things. It's really nice. And that one's um, two fifty nine nine. So that's a great house. I don't think that one's going to last long at all. And then I have, um, I will have a townhome coming up on Superior Ridge Northwest. Those are really nice. They're up on that cul-de-sac, that little point up there, like above the theater. And that one is, it's really big for a townhome. It's like 3,400 square feet. Oh, goodness, yeah. Everything you need is on the main. There's a master with a master bath and then a living room and a dining room, a sunroom, a kitchen, powder room. But then if you go upstairs, there's a couple more bedrooms and a loft area and a full bath. And then downstairs, there's a great big family room and another bedroom and another bath. That's a townhome. That's a townhome. Yeah, so it's big. It's nice for people who are downsizing from their house and they still have a lot of stuff that they don't necessarily want to part with. And like this particular couple, they're in their 80s now, but when they bought it, they still wanted room for their kids and grandkids Mm -hmm. to come home and have holidays, but they didn't really want to have to leave the main floor if they didn't need to. And that's pretty much where they're at now. They only use the main floor. And they don't need to worry about shoveling and all the other right. things that go exactly. with it. And it's a really nice location. So that one will be coming in a few months. They're going to move to a senior place, and they don't want to deal with the, the showings and stuff until afterward. But certainly I could arrange to show that. And then there is, um, oh, a, a really nice one that I went to um, at the end of the week that they won't be ready until spring. As a matter of fact, I recommended that they wait until spring because I think their house is going to be one of those ones that the residents will go gaga over. Um, it's right over by the Edison School building. And so it's, you know, walkable. Walking, yeah. And they've they've done a lot of nice things to it. They did the exterior. They did a new garage. They redid their front porch. They redid their back porch. And the inside has a lot of the original woodwork. It's beautiful. So that'll be a great one. And I haven't done the price on that yet, um, but I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere between three and three fifty. Um, and geez, I have been, it's been a busy, <laughs> it has been a busy week. I have a couple new ones coming on over in Wabasha. And so, yeah, good. Um, you mentioned the residents, and that's kind of the quirky thing about the Rochester real estate market is you have this annual influx mm-hmm. and uh, also departure of Mayo Clinic residents. Correct. Is there is that is there a certain part of the city that they're well? I mean, focused I, on, or is... of course they buy all over. Um, but we are seeing a lot of people really intrigued by walkability. Walkability, walkability. You and I were talking off air about that big apartment building going up by St. Mary's. Right. And, you know, it's it's huge. It has a ton of apartments in it, and they're going to be pretty high-end apartments. But 
people just love to live where they can walk to everything, you know, especially if they work at Mayo, they can just walk across the street, they're at work. But the idea of having coffee shops and, you know, these microbreweries that are popping up and new restaurants and everything is walkable, it's it's awesome. Is that um, a certain age group that's more in trance for uh, that? You know, maybe it's the 30-somethings, but I clearly have had cl- I would love it. I would love to live where everything's walkable. And as you know, I'm not in my 30s. But, you know, it's it's. I think it's more of a lifestyle than it is an age group. Okay. I always I, I did live downtown for a while. Yeah, me and, too. And then I don't live downtown. Yeah. And I see both sides of it. Yeah. I enjoyed mm-hmm. it when I lived downtown. Mm-hmm. But now I also enjoy the situation I'm in now yeah. as well. So Living on 2nd Street for 17 years. Yeah. You know, we were just in the heart of downtown, and I loved it. And downtown wasn't as cool as it is now. No. Then, <laughs> except for there was a theater downtown, and the kids That's loved true. that. They did love that. Yeah, there, there certainly wasn't anywhere near as much to oh, do yeah, as right. there is today in mm-hmm. our downtown. And I just going down Broadway the other day. I have a relative who's coming to town who hasn't been here for a couple of years. And I was just thinking in my mind how much they're going to go, wow, what's going on? Yeah, how things <laughs> oh, have changed. It's transformed over the last five years immensely. I wish that that a big apartment building was, you know, for sale and not for rent because I get so many requests for, do you have anything that's really high-end, you know, um, executive type Condos, condos downtown and there just really is very you know there are very few because they haven't added right. any condos nope, nope nope and i get it because the people that are spending the money to build them there's a it's a lot more lucrative to rent them you know once you sell them you get your money and you're done but if you're renting you just get your money get your money it keeps going right but i don't know how i don't know what the future of that building will be because I've said to you many times on this show that I feel like the people in Rochester are really smart about their money. And that's why I think so many med students and residents come in and buy instead of rent. Because at the end of their time here, they sell. And worst case scenario is they get their money back and they've lived for the last four years free. Or they make some money. So they had shelter and and an investment all at the same time. So I don't know. It'll be interesting. I mean, I think it's going to be really great in the beginning because it's new and a lot of people will want to be a part of that. But I mean, you who do knows? point out though. You know, you, when you think about niches within a marketplace, that's one mm-hmm. that really isn't being met. Right. No, we have such a high demand for condos that you can buy in downtown and walkability. And we just have such a lack. And all we've added is a lot of More apartments. More rentals. rentals. They're rentals. nice apartments. Oh, very yeah. nice. Yeah, very, very nice. Robin Gwaltney is here with Gwaltney Group Remax Results. We'll be back in just a few moments on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results with us this Saturday morning. And uh, boy, oh boy, it's that time of the year, heading towards winter, where our days are going to get shorter after today, in fact. I can't believe it's already time to... Fall back. Isn't that crazy? The end of daylight savings time. Yep. All my clients that are out there listening got the email from me telling them to turn the clocks back. <laughs> I enjoy the extra hour of sleep. Well, I told you before, you know, the selfishness for me when these short days is I don't get home at 8 o'clock at night. I get home at 6 or 6.30. It's kind of nice, you know, because once it's jet black outside, there's really not a lot of people that want to go out looking at houses. You know, you want to see the front yard and the backyard and the condition of the exterior and the windows, and it's kind of hard to do that in the pitch dark. And it gets really cold once the sun goes down. Yeah, it really does. (laughs) It really does. But along with just adjusting the clocks, too, the reminder that uh, check out those batteries in both the carbon monoxide detector and your smoke detectors. Right. And have your furnace. Oh, gosh. that just I just reminded myself of something that was such a bummer. I always have my furnace, um, you know, checked before the, the winter, sure. the inspection. 
and I got bad news that I had a plugged heat exchanger. And I wondered why, you know, we noticed that the top of our furnace was hot to the touch. So we told the guy when he came to inspect it, I don't think that it's supposed to be so hot to the touch. Yeah. And he said that it was, it's not as bad as a cracked heat exchanger where, you know, you can get carbon monoxide poisoning because he said the, the carbon monoxide level was higher, but it was still going out the exhaust. So at least we weren't in danger. He didn't shut your heat off. Yeah, we weren't in danger. He didn't shut us off. He didn't red take it. But we did have to buy a new furnace, (laughs) and it is going to be installed next Wednesday. And then I wanted him to fix my um, fireplace because the igniter wouldn't light right. The pilot light wouldn't stay lit. Well, guess what? That needs to be fixed, too. So it's like, great. But if we didn't know... It could be the dead of the winter, and then we could have a problem. So it's good to just, you know, get things checked out, maintain things, and stay ahead of it so you don't have that emergency service call or you're not losing your heat in the middle of the night. When you uh, have new clients who are not Minnesotans, oh boy, do you kind of do like a little class for them? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, we've talked many times about how so many people don't even realize they have to take their garden hose off the faucet yes. because wherever they moved here from, they didn't have to do that. It'll be a mistake you make once. You make it <laughs> once, right, exactly. So we're really, really good about trying to acclimate people to the Minnesota winter and the things that will be different about this house than the last house and you know things like getting that furnace inspected or, you know, covering the air conditioning unit or whatever it is, the things that they should do, we just want to make sure that they're aware. Don't wait until December to buy a shovel. Yeah, no. (laughs) And it's good to get a roof rake and keep that 12 inches of snow off the roof. And they're like, what? You got to shovel your roofs here? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of of different kind of maintenance for winter in Minnesota than there are other places. And why do I have salt in my garage? Why do you have a bag of salt there? I don't know if you remember this, Andy, but a couple of years ago, at the end of the year, everybody ran out. Yes. You remember that? I do. No matter, I was, I was started, I drove to about two or three places, and they're all like, we're out, we're out, we're out. I'm like, what? And so then I started calling places. Nope, sorry, we're out, we're out, we're out, because it was too late in the year to order more, because when they order it, they get a lot, a lot yeah. right? And then if they would have to store it all summer long, that'd be a problem. So that was the only, the last year that I ever ran out of that. Now I stock up and I make sure I have plenty. Everybody had hard water in their homes for a while. Exactly. Because they started (laughs) using the water softener, water salt to do the driveways. Yep. But obviously people, regardless of our inclement weather this time of the year are coming up, um, you're still Showing homes, though. And yeah. Still... Well, it's not icy yet. I mean, you know, put on a jacket, throw on some gloves. It's not It's not icy. People aren't really afraid of being out on the roads. And it's not snowy, so it's not hard to get to the, the doors and yeah. the driveways and stuff like that. So it's still very easy to get out and look at houses. But because of the dark coming faster, more people are... Like maybe taking the afternoon off or we do it on their day off or Saturday or Sunday or whatever. And that's one part of our business is we're busy, busy, busy on the weekends. You know, when people say, oh, thank God it's Friday. I'm like, yep, you're <laughs> up for my busiest time of the week. But that's okay. I mean, I knew that coming into this job yep. 20 years ago, and it's it's perfectly fine. I, I don't mind at all. I know there are some real estate agents that don't, they just don't work on the weekends, and I don't really get that. I can't imagine you'd be able to be productive. I don't get it. I mean, they manage because they've been in business a long time and they just say, this is my day off. And maybe they work Saturday and take Sunday off or maybe they don't work either or they work one weekend a month. But I'll tell you, I work Saturdays. I work Sundays. I work evenings. I mean, I work when I have to work and I feel like that helps aid my success. Well, you've told me many times that you're providing a service. Correct. It's not... You're not Correct. a salesperson. Correct. You, you see yourself. Right. And I, and I if, catch that with all your team members. It, too it's, it is about. our culture. It is definitely our culture at the Gwaltney Group that we are service providers. You know, we are, we don't come knocking on your door and say, hey, would you like to sell your house? Would you like to buy a house? We're not trying to sell you vacuum cleaners or pots and pans. You know, if you have decided it's time to buy a house or sell a house, then yes, we want to take you by the hand and guide you through it. And we want to help you with the process. But we're not trying to push you into making any decision that's not good for you ever. Oh, even Travis last week when I was speaking to him, he was telling me how with new home construction, he'll hold their hands, to yeah. use the phrase, to, yeah. as they go out and 
pick light fixtures yeah. and carpets yep. and everything else. Because we else. do it so often, you know, and we know how to get the value. We know um, what's going to help in the resaleability, yeah. you know, like even with floor plans and all of that stuff. So, yeah, it is. It is. Sometimes people think, what do I need an real estate agent for in new construction and um, there's definitely oh, huge goodness. value in having a real estate agent in new construction. Well, it's just to help guide you through this can be what well, can be a very stressful process. Right. That's for sure. Make it fun instead of stressful. Well, I happen to have you as a friend on Facebook as I think by the looks of it half the city. Oh. <laughs> um, you had, you posted I think it was even yesterday was it the day before um yeah Thursday some, or Friday some impressive uh, numbers and congratulations by the way thank you so Remax um, is part of Integra here in the Midwest and so they post their stats every so often for the state of Minnesota and that's all Remax agents across the state no matter if they work for Remax Results or Remax Integrity or Remax you know, whatever it is, there's all the REMAX agents, which is thousands and thousands of agents. And um, the Gwaltney Group is number four statewide as far as number of transactions or, you know, homes sold, yeah. right? And the three that are above us are all in the metro area. Well, that's not fair. Right. right. They have a lot more <laughs> inventory to sell and a lot more yeah. population, more people to sell to. But what that means by being number four in the state and the three above us being in the metro area is it means that nobody sells more. And I can start by saying no REMAX agent sells more real estate than the Gwaltney Group in all of greater Minnesota. Okay. And I can take it one step further and promise you that no agent in any other company sells more than the Gwaltney Group either. So I'm pretty proud of how much real estate we're selling and how well we're doing. We have an amazing team. Well, if somebody wants to talk to you or a member of your amazing team, how do they do that? Um, you can always call my cell phone, and that number is 507-259-4926, or you can visit our website at gwaltneygroup.com. All right, Robin, good to have you back. Nice to see you. Hope to see you next week with you more will. of our Rochester Real Estate Program on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM.